All right, guys, so in this tutorial, I want to talk to you about anti-aliasing. So anti-aliasing, as you probably all know, is when those jagged edges appear in your render and it just doesn't look very good. And uh, here I have an example scene. This is an, an animation, so maybe you could get away with it because everything's moving here, so it's not too bad. Um, but if you have this as a still image it's really really unnerving especially here in this part you can see how jagged those edges are and of course yes I'm, I'm zooming in a little bit but depending on your project this could be a lot worse and you really would have a kind of a blocky edge here that's not very smooth if you compare it to the rest of the edge here which is really smooth and everything's okay and then all of a sudden at this bright spot here it gets really jagged. So I'm not a really expert on all those rendering technologies and how the renderer is working but what I can tell you uh, first of all is that this occurs if you have a very bright light source so you can reduce it if you uh, reduce the power of your light source but this of course results in your scene getting less light than before. But this is basically the problem. There's a huge difference between the light on this edge here and the neighboring pixels. And the other possible reason is a light source that's too small. So if you make your light source bigger with a bigger um, area, then you can also help reduce this anti-aliasing. But that's not what we're here for today. Today we just gonna assume that you've already rendered everything and you just don't want to want to spend all the time rendering again. So you're stuck with this render here and what what to do with it, how to get rid of this ugly edge here. So there's a simple trick to do that if you're using After Effects here. You, the same technique I, I'd say uh, also applies to Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do right here, I'm just gonna select my render and duplicate it and then I'm gonna use an exposure effect on it. I also have the exposure effect in Photoshop so that should translate quite easy and first of all I'm, I'll try and reduce the exposure a little bit but only a little bit and the important part is the gamma correction. Just set the gamma really 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 down so point 0 is the least amount of gamma I can set here. So I'll leave it at that. And then I'm going to get a U saturation effect. Drop it on top of it. And I'm going to drop the saturation down to minus 100%. I'm just going to try and switch up the, the order of the effect. And you can see if I have, I have the exposure after the U saturation, this edge here gets a little bit smaller so I'll leave it as it is so that the hue saturation effect comes after the exposure effect. Now you can see that the edge has even gotten worse but that's not a problem because now what we're going to do is we'll just use a box blur effect and soften this up a little bit. As you can see it's quite aggressive here even when just using small values but I'll leave it as this for the moment. So now you see what we'll basically have done. We've isolated the brightest parts in the image and those parts are also the parts that have the the biggest anti-aliasing problems like this part up here is also bright spot and also has this anti-aliasing problem or this aliasing problem. And um, what I'm doing now I'm adding an adjustment layer and I'll also apply this fast box blur to the adjustment layer. So if I now just activate the layer I'm blurring the whole image. But the trick is now just to drop the adjustment layer beneath our our duplicate render, our black and white re render. So I'll just rename this here to black and white mask and then I'll just set this mask as a track mat for our adjustment layer. So I'm going to select Luma, Matte, Black, White, Mask. And now you can see how we are only blurring the parts that are masked white here. But you see it's looking very splodgy now and everything is washed out. 
so now we just go back to our adjustment layer and now we have the possibility to adjust this blur setting here and we also still have the possibility to change the settings of our mask so how blurred the mask is and how strongly the gamma correction is and if we have a look now you see if i turn the adjustment layer off this was the original and now it's quite soft maybe it's still too strong because i'm still having an a blur radius of one pixel so I'll just reduce it to maybe a half pixel but you already can see the difference I think and even point one already does soften up this edge pretty good point one five maybe and you'll just have to see what's best fitting for your image um, as you see here I'm also affecting those yellow elements because they are also pretty bright if i didn't want this i of course could also mask out this inner part of the image here but that's basically how you would use this technique just isolate the brightest spots in your image use it as a mask and then use a masked blur effect to get rid of those jagged alias edges. So I hope this tutorial was useful and have fun with your renders.